Hi guys. It is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise on the Mendocino County coast here on this Monday morning, September 19th, 2016. So it's time to get back to work. <coughs> get down there and get her done. So before I go, make my $15 an hour putting my college degree to work digging stumps out of the ground. I'm going to do what I do every Monday morning for free and that is to bring you my economic meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media in this case mostly Yahoo News finance pages to bring you the latest evidence of how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to bring down a planet. And let's just look at a couple of, just a couple of, of, of instances of this. Uh, this was actually coming to me from the Weather Channel of all places. I never found this story on Yahoo News. I, I guess they did not think this was worth mentioning. Okay, sinkhole leaks more than 200 million gallons of contaminated, slightly radioactive water into Florida aquifer. This is uh, a little bit east of Tampa. A massive sinkhole opened up underneath a storage pond in Florida, a, a phosphate mining tailings pond would be the correct way of saying this, uh, causing more than 200 million gallons of contaminated was wastewater from a fertilizer plant to leak into one of the state's main underground resources of drinking water. And this is that phosphate fertilizer, one of the major ingredients of global industrial agriculture. According to Mosaic, the world's largest supplier of phosphate, the hole opened up beneath a pile of waste material called gypsum stack. The 215 million gallon storage pond sits atop the waste mineral pile. Jesus. Uh, and they just casually mentioned that this water is slightly radioactive. But don't worry, Mosaic Incorporated has promised that it is monitoring the groundwater and has found no impacts. There you go. Quote, there is absolutely nobody at risk. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's bullshit. Yes, uh, the Florida aquifer on where this 215 million gallons of slightly radioactive wastewater is a major source of drinking water in the state. Yes, uh, and supplies water to thousands of domestic, industrial, and irrigation wells throughout the state. But don't worry, absolutely nobody is at risk from 215 million gallons of slightly radioactive industrial wastewater leaking into an aquifer. <clears throat> from there, from Florida to Russia, I guess this didn't go into the the groundwater, it just went into the river. Uh, you've probably seen these videos. Russian mining giant is to blame 
for Erie Blood Red River, a Russian mining giant admitted that a spill at one of its plants turned a river blood red last week. So we just heard from the world's biggest producer of, of phosphate. So now let's listen to the world's biggest producer of nickel and palladium, Norilsk Nickel, which initially denied that its nickel processing factory had leaked industrial waste into the Daldecon River near the Arctic Circle. But the company later said that after an investigation, it found abnormally heavy rain had caused the tailings dam, which holds mining residue and wastewater to overflow into the river, so blaming climate change for this. Um, let's see, where are they going to deny? Okay, here we go. I didn't, I, I knew it was coming up. The mining giant claimed the contamination was harmless and said it would work to avoid such incidents in the future. According to the mining giant, quote, short-term river color staining presents no hazards for people or river fauna. Hmm. Okay, what is our uh, esteemed Environmental Protection Agency? What's on their mind this week? EPA says glyphosate used in Monsanto herbicide likely not carcinogenic. Yes, uh, at least not carcinogenic to humans. Uh, as the EPA outlined its current position on the controversial chemical. Um, after reviewing the available data, the EPA states, <coughs> quote, the strongest support is for not likely to be carcinogenic to humans at doses relevant to human health risk assessment. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. So, so guys, the bottom line here, you know, I'm a little bit on the fence myself. Uh, with my review of the evidence, it sounds like the evidence to me pretty much says, I guess they looked at 86 studies, that those studies being funded by Monsanto claim uh, glyphosate is harmless. Those studies not being funded by Monsanto, which are the tiny minority of the studies, show that it is carcinogenic to humans, but of course, being an eco-Nazi, uh, my problem with, with Roundup and GMOs in general is the, is the threat they pose to the planet, not the threat they pose to the biggest threat to the planet. Okay, from that to uh, this story, and guys, I might have to do my whole uh, rant tomorrow about this. I can't go off uh, on a whole rant uh, on this story about this Bayer-Monsanto deal. How Bayer, this German company, you know, the aspirin maker, this giant pharmaceutical corporation paying $66 billion dollars as long as they can find a $57 billion loan from the global banksters behind it all that make these things possible. 
So now we have the world's biggest pharmaceutical, I think it's the world's biggest or one of the biggest, now joining with the world's biggest uh, or one of the biggest, I think it is the biggest, uh, industrial agriculture GMO corporations. This is the one story that, that I can remember seeing. It was hilarious. A uh, couple of days ago, I have, I have the Young Turks here and right next to the Young Turks in my, in my subscriptions is this story where the Young Turks sounding exactly like the Alex Jones channel on this story, agreeing 100% that, you know, this, this is just the latest example uh, of how these giant, evil, multinational corporations are, are, are just joining forces. Uh, I liked, uh, who's that little haughty uh, lieutenant of Alex Jones's, Leanne McAdoo, joking, but not entirely joking, that, you know, that, that, that this is a perfect setup, that this is, you know, the roundup story, is just next obvious level, where now these GMO foods can make us all sick, and then uh, the pharmaceuticals, can be invented to make us well from the GMO. So Monsanto can make us sick with our food and then we'll turn around and buy the drugs from Bayer to counteract the effects of Monsanto making us sick. And as I say, she was joking a little bit, but at least on a metaphorical level, this is exactly what is happening, but I don't, I, you know, that's, it, I, I could do three rants on this, but the Young Turks and Alex Jones have already done my job for me. Speaking of giant multinational corporations, let's stick to corporations based in our own country. What are they up to this week? To, no shit, Sherlock. U.S. companies are hoarding a record two and a half trillion dollars <coughs> of cash overseas. Hmm. The recent fight between Apple, Ireland, and the EU has once again shined a spotlight on the growing trend of U.S. companies storing cash overseas to avoid paying taxes. In fact, the amount of cash held by U.S.-based companies in foreign countries hit a record two and a half trillion dollars last year, which is roughly 14 percent of the U.S.'s total G GDP, according to Andrew Hunter, an economist at Capital Economics who described the increase as corporations hoarding their cash overseas. And that is exactly what it is, those uh, goddamn tax cheats. D, 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 okay. From there to self-driving cars from Market Watch this morning. Hello, self-driving cars. Goodbye, 4.1 million jobs. <clears throat> when the self-driving car revolution firmly took, takes hold, there will be carnage, according to Wolf Richter, uh, whoever he is, not the car crash kind, though that is a prevalent fear, but carnage on the employment front. <clears throat> this is uh, whoever this wolf guy is. Quote, the magnitude of this problem is breathtaking. Citing government figures 
he says that 4.1 million jobs are at risk from self-driving cars including chauffeurs, truck drivers, cab drivers, and rideshare vehicle drive drivers, meaning Uber drivers. <clears throat> Quote, these people can't easily switch to writing software. There's no room for them in manufacturing. Even the fast food sector is also getting automated, as are many other jobs, including writing stories for the major media wire and news service services. It all might be happening faster than society is prepared to deal with, and we're not even talking about it. <coughs> well, a few of us are talking about it. I'm sitting here talking about it. Okay, from self-driving cars to free trade uh, <clears throat> deals being, uh, you know, cheerleaded by Barack Obama. Tens of thousands protest in Europe against Atlantic free trade deals. Tens of thousands of people protested in European cities on Saturday against planned free trade deals with the U.S. and Canada, they say, will undermine democracy and lower food safety, environmental, and labor standards. 320,000 people, an alliance of environmental groups, labor unions, and opposition parties uh, took part in the German protest. Uh, alone. The demonstrations are against the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the TTIP, currently being negotiated by the European Union's executive with the respective governments across the Atlantic. Opposition to the trade deals has risen with critics saying the deals would hand too much power to bring to big multinational corporations at the expense of consumers and workers, not to mention the planet, by establishing arbitration courts to settle disputes between corporations and governments, meaning that if a government tries to make a law uh, protecting their citizens and their environment from these goddamn planet eaters, the planet eaters will just sue them. All right, from there, what's going, the latest story about this, uh, this haze over there in, uh, in Singapore being caused by all of these uh, forest fires. Come on now. From palm oil and pulpwood uh, corporations over there in Southeast Asia, study estimates 100,000 premature deaths from Indonesian haze. Are you coming up or not? Why are you acting so stupid? Come on. Did you come on? I don't know why my little dog is acting so helpless. Indonesian forest fires that choked a swath of Southeast Asia with the smoky haze for weeks last year may have caused more than 100,000 premature deaths, according to new research from Harvard and Columbia universities that will add pressure on Indonesia's government to tackle the annual crisis. Would you come up here? Why are you so helpless? Yes, can you say 
palm oil. I, it's interesting, palm oil never mentioned in this article. Never mentioned in this article, blaming it on the pulpwood uh, industry. It's the pulpwood, it's the palm oil, all the usual suspects. Okay, from Business Insider magazine, and this is being spun, I guess, as good news, good economic news, one of the most compelling growth stories on the planet. And this, this is uh, good, good news. Uh, with, let's see, China's middle class, are you trying to, look, well, look what you're doing to my bullshit detector button. I haven't even gotten to uh, this little dog trying to kill my bullshit detector button. Don't do it to my computer. Jesus, you little shit. Where was I? China's middle class is booming, and with that explosion of wealth comes the opportunity for the Chinese to try and experience new things, including traveling abroad. While only about 6% of Chinese citizens currently have passports allowing them to travel abroad, their, their overseas spending, this is 6% of Chinese, is the highest in the world, amounting to about $200 billion over the last three years. Their spending has gotten so crazy that, e that Japan even created a new word, bukkake, I'm sorry, bakugai, to explain their explosive buying. Yes, bakugi, sounding a lot like bukkake, speaking of explosions. Anyway, this is bukkake for the planet, uh, would be Chinese people taken to the skies from China to England. What's going on in the nuclear power industry this week? UK's Hinkley decision, good news for the nuclear industry, according to China. Hmm. <clears throat> Britain's decision to go ahead with the Hinkley C nuclear project is good news for the industry, said China National Nuclear Corporations. As Britain's government said on Thursday, it would go ahead with the $24 billion dollar Hinkley C nuclear project in which China uh, has agreed to take a 33% stake from, uh, from China and England to China, I think this is in Sub-Saharan Africa, wherever the hell Djibouti is. What's going on in Djibouti? Djibouti bets big on Chinese energy demand. Construction work is set to begin on a $4 billion liquefied natural gas pop pipeline project underscoring Djibouti's efforts to strengthen its status as an energy transshipment hub for East Africa. The project, which includes about a, this is about a 500 mile pipeline from Ethiopia to Djibouti, an LNG plant and export terminal on the country's eastern coastline uh, is set to take three years to complete. It is a joint venture between a joint venture between China Poly Group and Hong Kong based Golden Concord Holdings. The pipeline will have the capacity 
to transport 12 billion cubic meters of natural gas per year from Africa eventually to China. Okay, let's look at what's going on with big oil this week. Anybody who does not understand how the, the police state's connection to the global corporatocracy, if there's anyone left on this planet, how about this article to point it out to you? Police arrest 13 people at U.S. Interior Part Department oil and gas lease protests. Police arrested 13 environmental activists on Thursday who were protesting oil and natural gas leasing on federal public lands at the U.S. Department of the Interior, the agency responsible for auctioning rights to drill for oil and gas on our public lands. Can you say fracking? The protesters from groups including Friends of the Earth, Rainforest Action Network and Native American communities are part of a wide-ranging Keep It in the Ground network. Uh, research saying 80% of the world's remaining oil and gas and coal has to be left in the ground if the worst effects of climate change are to be avoided. Good luck on those protests. Uh, you know, good lord, I still I, I don't have time to get into the Dakota Access protest story. Uh, did get a chuckle out of this one. Lack of pipelines continues to dog Canada's oil industries. Can, Canadian oil companies have struggled for years to build enough pipeline capacity to get their oil out of landlocked Alberta. Um, still, the industry is applying a lot of pressure on the Canadian government to allow them to build an, out, an outlet out of Alberta, Bloomberg reports that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is keen on approving at least one major pipeline in his first term. That's Mr. Save the Planet. As long as we're up there in Canada, this, even though they don't have a pipeline, uh, what is Alberta, Canada doing to honor the Paris agreements? Alberta Greenlight's oil sands projects worth three billion dollars and my computer has taken this opportunity to completely lock up. Hello computer. Okay. Three new oil sands projects have been approved by the government of Alberta. The first to be approved after authorities, I don't know what authorities, capped greenhouse gas emissions from oil sands to 100 megatons. Uh, I don't know what that one hundred. So I guess they've decided that that's their way to honor the Paris agreements to give the green light to one hundred megatons of CO two from the oil sands projects. These projects will produce two and a half of those megatons of greenhouse gases. Okay, but we do have some bright lights here on the economic front this week from the marijuana field. Cannabis, the new California gold rush. 
looking at it, some little city which was an economic ruin. This is Adelanto, California. Today, the once desolate town is firmly back on the map, having joined a handful of communities in California in embracing large-scale commercial cannabis cultivation. A move that smells of success as the state prepares to vote in November on legalizing the use of recreational marijuana. Uh, <clears throat> nationwide, the legal cannabis market, which stood at about $5.7 billion in 2015, is projected to reach more than $23 billion by 2020 and I had to get a chuckle out of this because you know right here in Mendocino County and <clears throat> in Humboldt County next door <clears throat> you, you know these pot growers freaking out about this <clears throat> so all of the pot trimmers who somehow managed to get a job trimming pot around here are freaking out that this legalization of recreational marijuana will put them out of business. And they're calling this the last year <coughs> of the pot trimming business. Uh, what do they say? That 85% of Mendocino County's economy directly dependent on marijuana well directly and indirectly dependent and so you can look forward to more stories this, this is right here in the mainstream media on the finance page you know right next to the price of oil and gold and silver we have marijuana price down 1.2 percent to sixteen hundred thirty three dollars per pound. U.S. Cannabis Spot Index is down 1.2 percent to $1,633 per pound. Uh, you know, and this just, and, and this just goes, and just, it's just a standard business story. Uh, about the spot price of marijuana. There you go, comparing outdoor growing to indoor growing, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to wind up our, uh, our, I have no bullshit detector button. I have no idea here it is. I hope it didn't kill but this hilarious story which I meant to put in my Saturday clueless moron uh, roundup rant, but I'll wind up today with this hilarious story. Floating farm could grow food on empty cargo ships. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Anyway, I think I'm already past time. So I've got to wrap up this week's economic meltdown roundup rant, as I say. If I can, so I can head back out into this gorgeous day. I got to put on my shades because my own economic future is so bright since I am completely unable to figure out how to get a marijuana trimming job in Mendocino County in uh, late September, uh, I will instead head back out to a stump digging job. I have found a $15 an hour job digging stumps out of the ground. So I got to get out there and get her done so I too can join the global industrial economy. Bye guys.